back and forth with this and the amazing stuff that they're doing with Vitama. So Jacob, why don't you start by introducing us? Hi everyone, I'm Jacob Wright. And I'm Dr. Daniel Gutman. And you're tuned in to the Animal Innovation Show. Awesome introduction. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. I'm really excited to talk to you. So, so Jacob, why don't you start us off? Tell us who you guys are and how you're innovating and helping animals. Hi, Chris. Uh, thank you for having us. We're really excited to be here. And also, thank you to Kumba for introducing us to you and giving us the recommendation. So we are Vitama, and we are a new mobile veterinary franchise. And so essentially what that means is when veterinarians join, they get a van that's built out with everything that they want inside of it. Typically, it's everything you could find at a brick and mortar general practice hospital. They get a territory of their choice. And then more importantly, they get to choose how they practice, when they practice, what services they provide. And we, as the admin team, help them run and manage their business because with Vitama, they are business owners. Very cool. Now, I don't want to describe this as like a franchise model because it sounds like you guys are behind this doing a lot of support. Yes, we are. And it, and it is a franchise model. Okay. So um, it's a, exactly that. It's a franchise and we were selling mobile veterinary franchises. Yeah, very cool. So, so Daniel, tell us, I mean, take us back to the story. I mean, how did you guys come up with this? Well, uh, the brainchild of Dr. Rafi Dorian, who's our, uh, the other, the other part of the puzzle here. Um, and he started doing mobile practice in, I believe 2000 out of San Diego. I actually used to volunteer for him when I was applying to vet school. And then after I graduated, I got in touch with him again and, um, he had started his own mobile practice in the central coast of California. I joined in. Jacob was working as a technician at the time, and it really improved my quality of life. Uh, we found that it's just a model that everybody can benefit from. We saw how the animals were benefiting the clients and figured out how could we spread this along without owning it ourselves. And it's a way of us being able to empower veterinarians and have them service their own territories and do the things they want to without the overwhelming uh, uh, business acumen that they have to develop, which we don't really get a lot of in school. So uh, that's how we came up with the model. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've heard that from other vets before, Daniel, that it's, I mean, yeah, they do have a little bit of running a business, but it's not like you're getting a business degree at the same time you're getting your veterinary degree. Right. Uh, it's very few and far between that uh, there's any sort of guidance uh, unless you're really trying to do it on your own. Uh, there's no requirements, um, but so it's it, you just have to really be a go getter. And even if you are, there's still not a lot of help along the way. There's always a lot of bumps in the road as you're trying to figure out these things. Yeah. So now, Jacob, I mean, I've heard a lot more in recent years about mobile veterinarians, right? There's there's not a ton, but I mean, any idea how many there are in the U.S. and how big this market is right now? Well, in the mobile sector of the industry is definitely growing. It's not a new idea for veterinarians to be potential mobile veterinarians. I mean, yeah. there's a whole half of the industry, which is the large animal side of medicine. And typically, it's all mobile already. The veterinarian will drive out and do farm calls and do that sort of work. So the, the introduction to the veterinarian is not new. It's more of a new idea for small animal pet owners. And mm -hmm. so that sector of the industry is definitely growing. And there's plenty of new companies sprouting up. I couldn't tell you exactly how many mobile veterinarians there are. But especially in the last few years, there's been a lot or many more mobile companies coming coming around, especially after uh, COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, I think that really changed things. So, so Jacob, if, I, if I'm a veterinarian and I say, okay, I, I want to start a mobile practice, I mean, walk me through how, I, how do I work with you guys? What do I get? Yeah, that's a great question. So how this all starts is really 
it starts with the veterinarian having the idea of wanting to own their own mobile practice, but maybe not being, I don't want to say ambitious, maybe uh, enthusiastic or or well-rounded in their business acumen, like Dan said, to jump out and do this on their own. So maybe they want some help. We are not employing veterinarians, so we don't just hire veterinarians and put them in a van. So like I said, when they approach us and say, I want some help to own a practice and I want to do it in this territory, we say, okay. And the next step starts with what kind of practice do you want to offer? Hmm. Does it want to be, do you only want to do GP or do you want to offer some sort of specialty on wheels, a dentistry van? They describe their dream practice, a mobile practice, and we help them build it. Everything from getting their entities set up to doing their initial marketing, doing some demographic research, some competitive analysis, all of these sorts of things. We, we guide them and walk them through it. That's really cool. So it's really turnkey so so daniel when when somebody like yourself as a veterinarian right it it feels like you guys are taking them from the idea all the way through hey now you're ready to go right you you can actually start taking clients and and driving out and and servicing them yeah it's uh, you know dr dory and i um i jumped into his practice and so i always joke that i kind of wish I wait, waited a couple of years until they developed this so I could have started a Vatama van. Um, but that's part of the allure to having somebody like me on the team who can kind of walk through those bumps. Um, but you're absolutely right. There's uh, Because it doesn't exist in that territory, um, there's a whole uh, marketing roundup. Um uh, there's a lot of uh, research that goes into demographics. And by the time uh, a franchisee wants to be up and running, they should have at least a week full of appointments and they're ready to go. Nice. Now, I mean, Daniel, I, I, I Jacob kind of talked about, it. I mean, it could be all small, all types of small animals. It could be general practice, specialty. I mean, I think we've got five cats, right? And they would much prefer to have you come to us than for us to have to load them up in the car to go to the bath. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I always joke that um, veterinarians, uh, some of us uh, kind of dread our cat appointments, uh, especially the brick and mortar cats. They go on the the, in, into the carrier for 15, 20 minutes. Then they're in the waiting room, hearing some dogs barking. Then they're in, in the exam room waiting for a little checkup. And by that time, they're absolutely freaked out. They're losing it. And so for my first four or five years uh, without doing mobile practice, my cat appointments were probably about 10, 15% of what I was seeing in a day. Okay. And now I have days where I'm seeing uh, sometimes all of all cat days and they're all pleasurable experiences. Um, just the stress of the cat is not that difficult. Um, there's always going to be some that are not going to be a huge fan going to that, just like, <laughs> yeah, but, um, but it does make it a lot easier on them and a lot easier on the owners as well. Um, because they have to deal with that stress, especially multiple animals as well as trying yeah. to, trying to get three dogs and a cat into the car and take them to the vet can be a little bit, a little bit tricky. It just depends. Sometimes yeah, they don't get say, along our, great. Our cats me. like to bellow all the way to and from the vet, sing you a nice <laughs> song. Makes you feel terrible yeah. <laughs> that you're doing it to them. So. We're trying to help you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They just don't understand it. So, so Jacob, I mean, what about the financial side of this? I mean, for somebody that's listening to this, is it more more or less economical for a veterinarian to be in a mobile type practice than a classic brick and mortar? And that's a great topic. From what we've learned and what I've learned shadowing under and working with Dr. Dorian and Dr. Gutman at their mobile practice is the the financial benefit to the veterinarian, especially when they own their mobile practice, is night and day comparatively to working as a part owner or, or associate at a brick and mortar practice. Now, the startup cost is probably the, the dr most drastic difference between starting a Vatama mobile practice and starting your own brick and mortar practice. 
we can look at the average cost of starting a brick and mortar today, but depending on if you're buying the real estate or not, it ranges in anywhere from the 500,000 mark to the two plus million mark to build out from the ground up a, a brand new brick and mortar. In our model, we have have shown and estimate that it's our startup costs are between 108 to 188,000. In the range there, the difference is dependent upon what the veterinarian wants to go into their van. Hmm. So the the overhead is much, much lower. Um, and the startup costs are much lower than starting a brick and mortar practice. Nice. Now, have you guys, what about technology? Have you thought about how technology makes them more efficient? Oh, yes. So we, we work with, right now, Dr. Gutman, uh, Daniel can talk more about this, but we typically have a mobile ultrasound, a centrifuge, um, a laser, and some other equipment that can go in and out of the van. So in terms of technology and services that can be provided on the van, they're, they're definitely, it's moved much more uh, towards getting to that brick and mortar level care than just an EMT bag going in and out. Of yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds yeah, like, chicken. Daniel, is you've got a lot of options, right? As things get more miniaturized, it seems like there's almost almost nothing you can't do, right? With something, if you can fit it in a van. Absolutely. And, um, and yeah, the, the capabilities are there. Um, there are a couple of drawbacks like uh, hospitalizations, um, you know, but those are things that we try to work out um, uh, to be able to provide full services. But as far as what you can you can do in a van these days, uh, as Jacob said, we like to think of it as our mobile exam room. Um, and, and we can do some, some pretty good treatments in there as well. There's just so many good technologies, um, with animals, um, that are trying to keep them from being in a hospital setting, uh, that we try to utilize, uh, in the mobile practice. Yeah, I figure if your mobile practice is parked in the driveway, you know, the dog is probably not too unsure about getting in the back of the van because it's at his house, right? Versus me trying to bring him into the clinic and take him out back. Yeah, some of our patients literally jump into the van when they see us. <laughs> and, uh, and and again, that's one of the big draws to mobile practice is, is that you just see the excitement of the patients um, and then kind of the the flush of ease on the client's face as well when they see how easy things can be. So so Daniel, I got to figure one of the other problems is trying to figure out my route, right? What days I'm available, where do I go? I mean, how does Vitama help with that? Well, when we set up a territory, um, we'll be marketing primarily towards that territory. There's definitely an efficiency issue that happens with that. And so it all starts with building that and then incorporating Kumba into that program. They actually do route optimization and we're trying to trend towards people booking services online. It just seems to be the way that uh, mm -hmm. clients want to do things and it makes things very easy for us as well. And Kumba will will optimize that route, which is which is absolutely amazing. Uh, but there are days that um, you have to do fit ins and and this and that, um, and uh, um, that's that's something that is very experience based on on how to negotiate those circumstances and um, and, and try to work around it. So that's where we we try to help out as well. Sure. So Jacob, it sounds like Vitama and, and Kumba are a match made in heaven, but what other areas of, of running a mobile veterinary practice have been a challenge that you guys have had to overcome? Mm -hmm. By far and away, the I think the industry has seen that mobile practice, the, the, the bottleneck is scheduling. And so you're absolutely right. When we were introduced to Kumba, we are a match made in heaven and we love working with them. And I think they love working with us, but we we, we really enjoy their company and their product and, and service. The other main bottleneck, I would say, in, in mobile practice is 
inventory management. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because there are some, when you're ordering or when a veterinarian or a practice is ordering, they're typically ordering to a, lo a brick and mortar location, whether that's an office or a home or something like that. But then there's another step involved, different than a brick and mortar, which is transferring that to your vehicle, getting it in your van. And sometimes it can be challenging to make sure you're not over ordering or under ordering, depending on, well, what do I still have in the garage or what do I still have at back at the office that I'm not accounting for in the van? And so mm -hmm. a lot of what we're working on with our our lessons and what we're going to be teaching franchise owners is uh, lean strategies and lean inventory management to keep a really good track of of your inventory because that directly correlates to your margins and your overhead yeah some basic concepts from business school right but to your point i could imagine somebody just says oh it's just easier to order a giant box of these but then <laughs> where are you going to put them how are you going to stock them how do you make sure you have enough for the the clients that are on your route for that day but not so much that you've got six months worth exactly interesting so so daniel what what does the future look like for this it sounds like you guys have really figured out a lot of this stuff where do you guys want to take the business where do you see this going um you know, we, we definitely want to expand wherever it's needed and we feel like it's needed everywhere. So, um, definitely starting the U S we're, we're looking at, uh, how easy it is to establish franchisees, uh, in neighboring countries. Um, but, uh, yeah, coast to coast if needed. I mean, there's already so many, uh, mobile practices out there that are doing a great job. Um, I think that what's unique to Vitama is that we've we've been able to bring the exam room concept. So we have the built out van and then just, you know, it is hand holding for these veterinarians that are struggling to manage their own business. Um, and, and, and once you see the response of how easy it is for pet owners and, and again, the pets themselves, um, it's just, it's a part of the, I don't want to say market or industry, but just part of, of animal health that just needs to be incorporated. Um, you know, and, and when we do it, when, when I'm out day to day, I mean, the amount of times I hear like, you know, even human doctors making house calls, like, why is this not a thing? And, uh, and when we're living it day to day and, um, it's yeah, we just want to make that a reality. So that's that's the big the big part. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the the veterinary resource deserts and where vet offices are located versus the population and and the pets, I mean, it's it's a real thing. We talk about it a lot in the animal welfare industry, which I do a lot of work in, and just access to veterinary care is is important. And it's often hard, right? In in lower served areas. So to put a vet on wheels with pretty much everything that they need, except maybe some advanced things to accomplish 80 or 90% of the needs and keep those animals healthy contributes. It keeps animals out of shelters. It keeps all these other things from cascading because of that. It's a really um, a proactive approach. So I'm glad to see that you guys are, you guys are focused on this and really trying to make this turnkey because I can see so many aspects um, that are difficult to do. So, so Jacob, I mean, I know you've been a part of this from the beginning. Um, I'm curious, what have you learned about yourself in this entrepreneurial journey? A lot, uh, but I've, I've mainly learned how to, how valuable it is to communicate the the genuine goal of what we're trying to do and also learn the genuine goals of others because sometimes it's easy and you get caught up in our mission statements and vision statements of companies and in many times they just look like words on a page or words on a screen but finding that in myself is, is when I, I was a pre-vet student and an animal science student. And, and part of this whole story is it, while I was an undergrad 
in the pre-vet track, I was told the same narrative everyone gets told, which is you, you'll you'll never be successful. You'll be a slave to your work forever. And maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. But the reality is just the there's no business formal business education in the curriculum. And the debt is astronomical, which makes starting a business very difficult. And while learning that in undergrad, and now fast forward to today with Fatama, I think what I've learned is how passionate I am about creating an opportunity for veterinarians to not have to be told that same story I was told in school. That was one of the most, not deflating, but a little bit demoralizing or um, kind of it was unfortunate to hear that in school right. that, oh, it's going to be very difficult to start your own business. And so now I realize and what I've learned about myself is that this is what I'm meant to do is to create this path for veterinarians to have an opportunity to build the practice of their dreams and do what they want with it with our help and, and our guidance and our support. Yeah, I like that. I I like the fact that, I mean, like you said, it's sometimes you get a negative message, but it's now really inspired you to say, look, we can do more. So Daniel, what have you learned about yourself in this process? Um, you know, it's uh, kind of the last few questions, um, really talking about, um, you know, the uh, the well-being and the mental health of veterinarians. And, and as you probably talk to, to many vets on the show is that, I mean, there is a lot of, uh, stress on the veterinary industry. Um, and, um, during this, this journey into mobile practice and then through Vitama, um, it's just been a way of recognizing how, uh, less stressful veterinary medicine can be and we have so much pressure of wanting to help everyone and everything uh and not being able to do it um in a brick and mortar and and i think that uh, mobile practice allows us to be a bit more focused and dedicated and on the other side of things we see how grateful um our clients and patients can be um, so it's, it, it has been more fulfilling and just being able to show that to people. Um, you know, I talk with a lot of my classmates, a lot of my colleagues and, 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 and you try to express how things can be, how things can be good. Um, and now to actually provide them for that way is, um, you know, if, if things go well, then, then that, I feel like that's going to be the most fulfilling thing. So, uh, it's definitely, definitely fulfill, more fulfilling as, as time goes on. Very cool. Well, I, I think it's really great. I'm glad you guys are tackling this. Jacob, I mean, if people are interested in learning more, how do they find out about you guys? How do they get hold of you? They can go to our website. That's probably the easiest way and peruse and read all about the about and the, how it works and then submit a form. Or they can just email us directly at hello at Vitama.com. Nice and easy. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sharing what you guys are doing. And hopefully we'll inspire a whole bunch of veterinarians that really decide, you know, it's time to strike out on my own, start my own business. And you guys have got the turnkey solution to get them going. So that's really cool. And, you know, as I wrap up our show here, I just, I love focusing on innovation. And so maybe some listener or viewer is watching, listening and thinking, you know, I've got a great idea for something that can help animals or the people that love them. We'd love to know about it. Just go to innovations.show and we'd love to have you on the show. And we always need more uh, animal rescue volunteers at dubert.com. So if you want to be a transporter or foster, even if you're just buying pet food, you can designate uh, the animal rescue or shelter of your choice and we'll give them 5% of your order. So check it out. Everything is free. Go to dubert.com. So Daniel, Jacob, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for what you guys are doing. And hopefully this thing will take off. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate it.